thank you everyone for joining us and I do apologize for that disruption there for anyone, for, for anyone that couldn't hear us. Um, you're here joining us for the webinar on why ServiceNow is a platform which will automate and consumerize HR processes. Um, we'll be looking particularly into how you can manage joiners, movers and leavers. Um, trust everyone's familiar with using GoToWebinar. Um, there is a box on the side where you can ask questions. If you just click on the plus sign, you can expand it and there'll be an area where you can ask questions and we'll pick these up later. Um, there's also a hashtag that you can use uh, to send us questions on hashtag through JML. And this can be before or during the webinar or after it, sorry. And we will pick these up later as well. I'll just quickly introduce myself and our main speaker for today. Uh, my name's Tina. I'm the Marketing Executive for Fruition Partners. So I'll be introducing the background information for Fruition and ServiceNow and then closing off the webinar. Uh, we've also got John Perks here today. Uh, he's delivered actually many more uh, non-IT applications using ServiceNow uh, from process design to technical implementation. And he'll be taking us through the other slides and demos too. Uh, so I'll just quickly introduce John now. Hi there. Uh, John's Fruition and Partners Principal Consulting. He has over 15 years experience in the industry, um, so that's a lot. And he's actually a ServiceNow certified implementation consultant and trainer. Uh, he's applied his knowledge and expertise to many of our um, client projects, particularly NHS flood and tra um, trans transplant projects. Uh, where he's deployed service now for their HR. So he really is someone with a lot of knowledge and understands the ins and outs of service now platforms in many industries. So this brings me on to today's agenda. Uh, we'll begin the webinar off with a fruition and service now overview. We'll look at the joiners movers leaders process. Um, we'll go through the demo and we've also got a case study on NHS and how we help them with their HR service management. Um, and then we'll go through the benefits of service automation uh, for the JML process. Excuse me. We'll now bring to begin just looking at exactly who service now are. Um, for those who already know about who service now are, just quickly go through uh, the main points about it. Uh, so service now, you know, as its name suggests, is service orientated. Uh, as an enterprise cloud company, they provide a service model that gives definition and structure to tasks and processes. It's an automation where it's eliminating emails and spreadsheets to make more streamlined service delivery. It's not just for the IT department, which is what we're going to see today. Um, it's used across the departments, um, including HR, of course, um, also facilities and finance. Um, as you can see, uh, the company is actually global and they work with clients from around the world. Um, they've got more than 2,400 customers and over 2,800 employees with major sites in San Diego, Silicon Valley, Amsterdam, London, and Sydney, just to name a few. Um, the last graph on here shows the revenue and the growth, which is pretty self-explanatory. You see how the company has grown and continued to increase more and more with the years just showing the impact it has in the industry and proving to make a difference with so many people seeing value in it. Um, what exactly is this value? Uh, what makes ServiceNow stand out is its single system of record and single architecture. As we mentioned, every department in the enterprise has to deal with issues um, you know, that can be costly and time consuming. So ServiceNow actually looks like a, a range of areas such as IT and HR um, that can benefit from a single system record. So for today, we'll be looking at exactly how the HR department can handle multiple queries with the one system and how it can be viewed across the department. So I'm just going to quickly go through uh, Fruition Partners. Um, we actually will be the only partner you will need um, throughout your journey. Um, and we'll look at exactly why that is. Um, we're actually the only master solutions provider in the UK for ServiceNow. Uh, and this is the highest tier of the partnership that you can get with ServiceNow. So, you know, we are the best of the best. Um, we've been in the ISIL service management space for over 18 years. And for the past six years, we've dedicated our practice only to working with ServiceNow as our service management tool choice. We've continually proven to bring automation beyond IT. 
We've come to understand the ins and outs of the tool to help establish how effective it could be for your business. The fruition team, you know, we're knowledgeable in all areas of service now as a platform. We've got employees that can help customers all levels of queries from basic to more technical. Um, from a scale perspective, you can see we have over 300 employees. Um, over 100 are certified administrators and more than 50 are implementation specialists. They've got years of service now experience. So when you're working with fruition, you can be rest assured that you're in good hands. Working with the right people can only guide you in the right direction. We look at focus now. You're impressed to see how hard we work to deliver high quality of service to our clients. You know, in the marketplace, we've achieved three times more projects than any other active partner with an aggregate 8.9 out of 10 customer satisfaction. Sorry, um, we received the highest score for customers for the past couple of years over our competitors, and I mean, this just goes to show exactly how much of an effort we will go into each of our clients to deliver the best of the best, and how we stay competitive in the industry, just to stay the master solution partner in the service now. Hard work, as we all know, does pay off. Um, fruition Partners um, works closely with the client to get exactly how to see exactly, you know, what they want, and we take them on the journey. Um, to look at how we will transform their service management. It's not just a one-time implementation, it's an ongoing journey that aims to change the service environment. We've completed over 1,700 projects for our 800 plus customers. We continue to offer more help and advice to our customers and ensure that they're making the best use of the platform. We can assist with the running of the service now as well, um, you know, where it can prove to be a bit more technical. Um, so a lot of our customers use us to run their service now instance because we have the best teams in what they do and they're fully trained to handle the job. Finding the expert in the platform can be hard, but our fruition specialists have the training, they've got the experience and they have the service now talent. When it comes to innovation, we are the leading edge of using a service now to drive innovation in the service industry. We think this helps us support our customers to get more and more out of service now. Fruition partners actually invest a lot of time, money and resource into putting back into the service now. Uh, we've got certified apps, we've created all types of service now connectors, and we invest heavily into the R and D department to help us take clients, you know, along their journey to the next phase of their service management. With us by your side, you won't have to worry about what's going to happen next because we most likely would already know and will take you forward with our advances. So that is why we'll be, we will be the only partners that you will need on your service management journey when you use ServiceNow. If I just go through the actual process itself, um, we'll look at you know, firstly, obviously trying to understand your individual um, service management strategy and what it looks like today, uh, how it's working and how it compares to best practice. Uh, we'll actually be able to identify and map where the company wants to go. Sometimes this can take organizational change management. We actually want to understand first what our customers want and what their needs are and then we can advise them with the best suited solution. Uh, the implementation phase will, of ServiceNow, uh, we'll implement it, we'll show you how this new tool is new, an effective way of doing work to a higher adoption rate um, than you may have seen before, and we'll also help educate the organization with the technical learning and implementation process you know, we actually really want our customers to be experts in the ServiceNow platform too. And, you know, in which case we do offer ISO education and certified uh, ServiceNow training. Um, as we spoke about it earlier, we also manage services for you. Uh, we can set it up for you. Uh, you can then subscribe to either certain numbers of hours a month or a holistic outsource. We'll be there for you if you need some help, um, if you want to invest more time into the rest of the business, We'll be there to manage the service for you. And innovation, as I said before, is key for us. 
We invest into the platform, um, people, and to look to create new solutions on the platform so our customers can grow with us and can learn other things in the service now, what the service now tool can do. Uh, we will guide you to show you how much more effectively your business can run. And the best tool that's out there to collaborate with it will know exactly which ones those are. So to conclude my part, you know, if you are looking for a partner to help you get the most out of service now, this is why we're the best partners to work with and, you know, the only ones that you'll need. Uh, I'm actually going to pass the presentation on to John Perks now. Um, he'll delight you with more of the technical side of the ServiceNow HR platform. Hello again. So ServiceNow is a platform. Uh, it's been around for a few years now. Fruition Partners has been uh, working alongside ServiceNow for over six years on the platform itself. And the original design of the platform was intended by a guy called Fred Luddy to support way beyond IT. In IT, we know that we, we have experience in managing task management, not just incident management or change management. But the same dialogues are true whether we're trying to raise an HR case, an HR query, a facilities event, or a, a service, uh, an IT service management incident. There is a sequence of activities that we need to go through to make sure that that piece is recorded correctly transitioned, fixed, and given back to a user in good condition. And the platform was originally designed for this, and in more recent releases of ServiceNow, we've seen more and more evidence of it being ready to support this. We're now on the Fuji release, and ServiceNow have gone through a little rebranding. They're identifying now that we're looking at an enterprise service model as opposed to just an IT service model, where we're actually offering the support to all of the other business lines or many of the other business lines that we see are looking for it. And in actual fact, over around 30% of ServiceNow's customers spend is in the non-ITFM space. We've already got a significant quantity of HR customers, facilities customers, and that. Um, and hence the presentation today to show you what we can do in ServiceNow for non-IT customers. ServiceNow, as I say, is an ITSM platform that was designed for this. Fred Luddy, way back when he started designing it, um, Design some core models for the platform. It's got a ticket handling capability. It doesn't matter what sort of ticket it is. And it's also got some core databases. So we expect to have a single user database. So we, we're talking about the same user, whether we're talking about an HR user, a facilities user, or an IT user. All of the people in your business are the same people. Why would we not use the same common record to underpin that? There's also some core code and some core dialogue. Service now notification engine. It can send out emails. Um, <coughs> it can also connect to things like Twilio, and it can do these activities and approval mechanisms. And it can do all of these activities, and it doesn't matter if it's an HR query or an IT incident. The same piece of notification software works in the same way for that, and therefore we control those notifications to those correct audiences. And we're using the same user record, so we've always got the same email address for that as well. The absolute core of ServiceNow is the service management suite. And this goes beyond the IT service management suite. And you can see IT is in the middle there. But we extend out into a marketing, field service, finance, legal, facilities, and an HR service management suite. And we're able to handle cases, queries, incidents, whatever they would be. There is very little difference between a facilities incident, a HR case, and an IT incident. Beyond this, ServiceNow also has the capability to support the middle and upper management. We have some good reporting capabilities, but we also have modules to support governance, uh, be it IT policies or HR policies. We have a vendor management piece, and again, this will work for facilities as well as it will work for IT. Uh, we have um, information on the companies that we're working with, the contracts. We can actually review the vendors and see how well they're doing against our delivery expectations. We have some financial management capability, and we have reporting capability on that. And then if you look to the right, we can work on demand management. And it doesn't matter if, again, it's an IT demand or if it's a facilities demand. And project management, it doesn't matter if it's a new office build or a new data center. It's all of the same record keeping and record management. And then right out on the right-hand side, there's an extended analytics pack, which allows us to get some uh, trend reporting as well as basic uh, quantity reporting out of service now. 
Very quickly on the lower end of the stack, we've also got an application development piece. Um, one of the classic case studies from a few years ago for ServiceNow was a piece that was done for one of the southern universities for the cleaning department. Very small application, revolutionized the way that they manage their cleaning just on their capability to walk around the building, check the cleaning, and work on an iPad instead of a clipboard full of pieces of paper, um, and of course, filing that information and retaining it. And these applications can be developed by everything from citizen creators, and that's lots of developers out in the community, on through the professional creators, which are seen as the consultants that do this. Um, and the platform supports both development and deployment of that application, but the control of that development as well. And very finally, operations management, that's much more an IT piece, um, and that's about us maintaining the service uh, delivery of the IT. So, HR. Now, this is a representation of actually what was a simple IT join us process. Uh, sorry, simple HR join us process. Um, we don't intend that you're reading the code flow chart, and I don't intend to start a process workshop on this flow chart. Um, the point is that for HR, the join us process in its own right is complex. There are a lot of things going on. There are a lot of things that need to happen in the right order. There's a lot of information we need to collect and collate. Um, and I expect that many of you in HR have got similar processes. And some of the work I've done with HR units, these are not even designed out as a process diagram. There's some knowledge amongst the HR department. There are some policies, listed lists, operating guides, things like that. Um, so it's rare to see them all collated in one place. One case that I had with a customer we had seven different pieces of paper that were actually on five different desks around one building, but in many offices. And for any joiner, it was expected that all seven pieces of paper would be filled out, but they hadn't even collated a pack of all seven pieces of paper. And it was expected that any manager that had a new joiner would know that he had to visit these five desks and fill out all of these pieces of paper. You end up with a case that we've seen in businesses that we've been to as well, where you actually join a company and one of the pieces of paper has been missed and all of a sudden your holiday days aren't allowed until you first come to look to book a holiday. We're suggesting that we can help you with this. We have a system where we can file all of this information in one place and we can make it easy to fill out that joiners pack, do this electronically, ensure that it's being done properly, ensure that everybody's being picked up. And of course, the end result of a process like this where it does go wrong is that the new joiner is not very impressed on the first day when they find a significant piece of their joining process has been missed and they don't have a pass to get into the building. I don't know how many of you out there, because I can't see my audience, have been around as long as I have. Um, in actual fact, I work for a government department and when I joined any new department and we used to move around every few years, we were actually given the, the paperwork ourselves, and we, nothing yeah. was done for us on day one. We had to step from unit to unit and get this paper filled out. So in that case, as a new joiner, I was expected to get the paperwork filled out. Many of you will have inboxes full of paperwork, outboxes, and of course what we've done now is we've replaced all this by phone calls and spreadsheets and emails. We haven't improved anything. We've just moved the problem from pieces of paper to electronic conversations. So HR lacks a formal modern case management system that allows you to efficiently and effectively manage employee requests and queries. And it becomes most evident in the joiner movers and leavers processes. We, we sometimes miss things when people join, when they move. We don't find out until two weeks later that we didn't update their telephone directory entry. Um, the other one is people getting married. I've seen systems where we still have the maiden name for some of the records around the environment for people who've been married for five, five years. And of course, for the leavers process as well, we need to make sure we have closed everything up properly. I've actually seen one case where they identified three or four people who were still on the payroll several months after they'd left the business. So as an overall picture, we think that using a manual service model looks like this. Somebody asks for something, we get em emails, um, we get requests for more information, we get people evaluating it. 
eventually we get um, this request is fulfilled and that's worked through by people who just are expected to know what they do. This is what we always do with the joiner. These are the bits and pieces I need to do. Uh, it's a checklist pinned up to their backboard on their desk and things like that. As IT, we can see some value in us thinking beyond what we do and taking some of the things that we've learned to do and bringing it back to other business units like HR and actually show you things and one of the lines is consumerization of service. And this is a quote that we quite like. What we're talking about isn't just giving you an IT system to do it, it's about making the changes within HR that allow us to benefit from that IT, to understand that it's not IT being annoying, it's IT actually helping us to do a really good job. And that's because our end users expect more of us. They want the same experience out of the company that they get from somewhere like Amazon, where things just happen, it ticks its way through. eBay as well, if you buy something on eBay, it just gets delivered, and if something goes wrong with it, there is a, a remediation process. These things are all designed out, they're all electronic. The, the, elect, the IT helps make sure that these things happen as they should. So to achieve this, we want to help HR get a better formal service model. And this service model is the first thing that underpins it. We can put it all into IT when we're ready, but we want to make sure that we've got this well defined. You don't actually need it to deliver the service. You don't need the model to deliver service. There's plenty of cases where people are doing a really good job based on the way they've been doing it for a long time. But the challenge is how do you manage it? If one person goes sick, how do you make sure that things are moving? How do you know how well you're doing? How do you prove to the rest of the business that you are doing as good a job as you can do? And on this map, we have a requester on the left-hand side. And first of all, they get to a taxonomy of services. These are all the things that we can do in HR, be it a maternity leave request, uh, a payroll request, a holiday request, all of the different things that HR can offer, these are things that are offered in the service taxonomy. Then there's the service experience. How does that requester actually get to these services? How do they ask for HR to do something for them? Then how do HR deliver that service? What are the steps that we take to make sure it happens? How do we make sure it happens the same every time for everybody in every location, no matter how they started the request, where they are in it? And on top of that, we have the service assurance. We should check that we're delivering the same service today as we delivered yesterday, and we will continue to deliver it tomorrow, or improve, of course, if that's what we're aiming to do. And of course, the service analytics then underpin that. This is the management information on how well we're delivering that service. So we describe our services, we present them to our user, we deliver them in the same way every time, we just cut it out as a standard delivery model, we manage it, we monitor it and manage it, and then we analyze it, ensure that we're doing the best we can, and if we're not doing the best we can, we improve the various steps of it until we're offering the best, most efficient service we can to our users both for their service experience and for our economy of delivery. We believe these are the five pillars that for HR to deliver a robust service model will, will support that. But actually for anybody, for facilities, for legal, for all of the departments, and they're the pieces that we in IT use to deliver our service models. And these apply very specific to adjoiners, movers, levers, because they tend to be such complex processes compared to so many of the others. So how do we automate that? That's the process piece. How can the tools help us? Well, if we've got the requester, the first thing we can do for the requester is we can offer them a service catalog. We can offer them a knowledge base, and we can offer them mechanisms to collaborate, and therefore, very much like the question piece that's operating on this, this um, WebEx, we can offer them an environment where they can ask a question and get an answer directly. We can keep records. We have a service record of what somebody's asked for, whether they've ordered something, whether they've made a query. We can keep a record of that. And then underneath the record, we have a service-oriented workflow. 
We've got the approvals and notifications that go off to our executive to ensure that the right things are being done and they're okay to be done. And we've actually got the tasks and the work that goes off to all the people that need to do that work for all the analysts and the business consultants, the process consultants. Um, and we can then track those tasks to make sure they're getting done. And then to the right-hand side, the reporting and analytics. Well, ServiceNow has got several, several levels of those, and any tool should offer those. There's no point doing work that we can't understand how well we're doing it, that we can generate management information, that we can change and improve how we're doing it, and then we report on it again to make sure those changes were worth doing and we do some more. We need the reporting just to ensure we're doing it as well as we can or to identify how we can improve it. So all of this is the piece that goes between the requester and the provider to ensure that that requester is getting the best service experience they can. And actually, it's in there for the executives as well. We should consider their service experience, but we're also ensuring that we engage them and they're making the right decisions without being swamped by the whole piece of information that's flowing through there. In fruition, we've actually designed a platform that will support all of this, and we've got uh, an extension of the service now, single uh, user portal. The idea of this portal is that for any business unit, all of our, all of our 7,000, our 40,000, 70,000 employees, we give them a self-service portal where they can access not just IT, but they can also access HR, facilities, finance, and the other departments for the transactions that you want to carry out with them. The fruition one is an extension of the ServiceNow one, and for the demonstration, I'm going to show you the ServiceNow out of the box portal, because my idea was that for demonstration, you would see how little we have to move forward. But for fruition, we have some ideas of our own beyond that about how this should be working. Um, for example, this is our model for an HR portal. And you can see that we've got um, a selection there that looks very much like an Amazon portal, an eBay portal, or all of the other web experience you get everywhere else, where the users are pretty um, intuitively able to do the things they wish to do, be it look for some knowledge or raise a query. And of course, if the users are raising queries of any description, then we give them back a list of the tickets that they've raised so that they can see the things they've asked about and they can track the progress on those and also see the responses they've got to them. At this point, excuse me for a minute while I just change my screens around a bit and I will show you how ServiceNow works for this. So the very first page I'm taking you to is this one here, and this is the HR portal in ServiceNow. And the first screen you can see is the um, human resources overview. So we have a dashboard of information that is easily presented to an HR user, and you can see that we've got active HR cases by category. We've got some active HR cases by assignment, which of our um, HR consultants are actually dealing with at the moment. There's a pivot chart, which is HR cases, a breakdown of them by assignment and by category. And we've got a list of the ones opened in the last six months on the right-hand side. These dashboards, your deployment consultant can build these out for you. And any one of these is a report. We can add all sorts of different reports to here. And in ServiceNow, all of these reports are fully active. So if we wish to see the um, HR cases by category, which are for general inquiry, which is the orange one on the graph, you can click on there, and we move straight into a list. Sorry, we've had a dropout on something there, but we've, we're moving straight into a list of those cases, and we can carry on drilling down straight into one of those cases. So just for a HR platform, it's a very simple to train on platform where we've got a very simple dialogue. Um, we don't require extensive IT knowledge of our HR consultants. We can show them very quickly how to use it, and they can record information, monitor it, update it all in a simple record. Excuse me while I just make sure that it's logged in correctly. But that's the HR experience. 
I'm going to take you to the experience of all users. So this, I'll stay logged in as an HR consultant, but an HR consultant, like everybody else, is a business user. And this is the experience of any one of your business users using ServiceNow out of the box for their enterprise service management, for all of the different services that they can purchase in the business. We'll go straight to the IT one first. I'm just going to briefly go past the one. And in the classic style you may have seen in systems, you've got yourselves. The IT service catalog looks like this. And if we look at departmental services and scroll down here, the joiners, movers, and leavers request is part of the IT piece. That's not unusual. We frequently see joiners, movers, leavers as being a significant HR, uh, IT piece. But if I take us back to the top level here, we've got the HR portal as well. And if we go into the HR catalog, the things I might ask for from HR, and into the employee changes, we can get this way as well to exactly the same request. This is a joiner mover lever request, and it doesn't matter if the line manager is looking for a new joiner and they start in the IT catalog or the HR catalog, they will come to the same thing. And this is what they see as the first page. And the first page is asking them, is it a joiner, is it a mover, or is it a lever? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll have a joiner, and as usual, we're recruiting more sales guys because we're forever recruiting sales. Okay. And we'll go to the next page. Immediately, we've populated a load of information about this. We have grabbed a bunch of things that we would need for a new person. And we're going to step through the other ones quickly because they're IT ones. This is the important form to us. This is the, I, the HR joiner form. And you can see that the department's already populated with sales. Let's put in some details about who they are. I'm going to pick on Paul Cartwright. He's one of our attendees. I hope you don't mind, Paul. That just shows you that I'm not cheating. And Paul will be permanent, and he will be in the position of a sales executive. Just because it's the quickest one on my list, I'm going to actually employ him in our office in San Diego. That'd be nice. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Paul's due to start on the 1st of September. And we want an email address of paul.cartwright at myco.go.uk. His manager, well, let's make that Fred Luddy. For those who've seen ServiceNow, he's our founder. So we'll give Paul that a minute as his um, boss. And his location type is going to be office space. We decided that already. Now that's all of the information we need for HR for a joiner. It's that quick for his line manager to fill that out and it's ready to go. But in the meantime, let's go and figure out what else he wants. He's getting a sales laptop and that was chosen because we've picked a salesman who's joining. And he wants PowerPoint because he's a sales guy, he's gonna need that and he's gonna need the Siebel client because that'll allow him to do his sales work. There's nothing more to say about Lotus Notes. We use Lotus Notes in our company and Finally, we're going to pick which applications he is going to use. And this list, would I would expect for a company to be cleaned up for what you need. You may recognize what I've actually done is I've picked ServiceNow's demo data out of, straight out of the system. And there's a couple of items here where it's slightly off. But we're going to pick the applications for mailbox backups and printing. Those are the applications we wanted to get. And if we go to the checkout, it's just like Amazon. It's an Amazon shopping cart experience, complete with the billing. If we're going to do costing for these, we can set into the catalog what the cost of any of those items will be, and that's presented to the person who's booking this in the first place. Um, it would be presented on to anybody else who's handling this request, and eventually we can take the billing back to the cost center for where that person joins. So that's it. We can see all the IT things on here. We know we've filled out the HR form, and we're now going to check that out. and we get a confirmation that that's been booked. There's a few things there that are applicable to IT, and Tina's just noted we've got to be fairly quick because we lost a couple of minutes at the start, so I'm going to jump sideways one. If you remember, I'm logged in as Eileen Alton, and she's an HR consultant. Now, there's only two menus available to Eileen. 
she's got the self-service menu because she's a business employee and she's got the human resources menu and having just raised the case we can see that case at the top of the list there's an onboarding request for Paul Cartwright and at this point we can pick up that onboarding request in HR and we can start to progress it now Eileen's not allowed to change some of the data on this request HR's got quite a, a sophisticated security model again that your service now deployment consultants will help you moderate to ensure this correctly set um, but what Eileen can see straight away is here's the data that we've collected on this uh, this person who's onboarding and we can now start to fill out some more of the information and ensure that we do the things we need to do in HR to transition this employee through the HR system we're not stuck with the fields that are on this form we can add more information to this record we can secure the information national insurance numbers one I've worked with in the past and we secured that to a certain level of HR consultant and nobody else in the system. It is a common record for the person, the user record will be, um, the task record will be available to all the people that it should be, but we can start to generate this information and generate the HR profile. The other one I'm going to look at very quickly then is, I'm going to go back to the portal and we're going to book one more catalog request and we're going to go through the joiners, movers and leavers but this time we're going to pick a lever now when I pick lever you'll notice that we've now got a field that asks us to pick an existing user every user in our business is already in the system if they're leaving we must already know about them and let's say Lacey is leaving us okay we now choose the options for Lacey this record for HR is already populated with that user what type it's a voluntary termination she's identified she wishes to leave us and Lacey wishes to leave us on the 1st of September and the other thing we have in here is a general IT request for an IT lever and all that's going to do is ensure that IT recovers the assets closes the accounts and removes all access now if we've got into the process very early and we were well developed we will actually know in ServiceNow about all of the assets, accounts, and access permissions that Lacey has in our company, and we can actually use that data to ensure that we close out all of Lacey's uh, information and records correctly. We recover her laptop, we recover her mobile phone, we close down her access to Siebel or SAP, and that we've actually terminated her correctly in the type payroll, things like that. I'm just going to go back to the main screen for HR <coughs> and what we do see is that we've got a new case and we've got the offboarding request for Lacey as an HR record what I'm now going to do is jump to another screen where I'll look at the um, IT requests and you can see that in IT we also have a request and that request is ready to go to ensure that as an IT task we, we, we do that uh, recovery of information that we're expected to do and the thing I didn't highlight a little earlier is that all of these be the HR request or the IT request are assigned to an individual and a group so that we know who is supposed to be doing this work we can manage and monitor that the work is being progressed and we can move on uh, we can ensure that we do all of these tasks and we can put SLAs on them so we can make sure they're done in the correct time okay with 10 minutes to go I'm going to stop the service now demo there and I'm going to move to a few slides that we've selected from a slide deck So, Tina mentioned on the way that I did some significant work with um, NHSBT on their HR processes. And what I've done is exerted 
some slides that NHSBT's HR director presented to the ServiceNow Now Forum back in March of October 2014. And this identified the benefits that he saw out of using ServiceNow in HR. This is HR, NHS blood and transplant. Um, I'm sure the UK audience will know about them, but for the US audience, uh, there used to be 15 regional departments and, and one further organization that consolidated many years ago. And they are the people who take all of the blood and the organ donations, be it live donors, which is interesting to me, or um, deceased donors, and they make sure that those um, units are taken to the correct recipients, but they also have a huge IT load when they record both the donors and the recipients. And there's some interesting functions where you can be both a recipient and a donor through the life cycle. So there's some complex IT issues for them. But what we actually stepped into was an HR department that was still spread across the 15 organizational units. So the HR experience could be different for any one of those different centers. Um, and it wasn't consolidated. So if I had an HR query, it would be raised by my local consultant. It will be transitioned to the national HR center. Um, if my HR consultant had gone on holiday, I might not get my answer for three weeks because he wasn't handling it anymore. So they had a unit reorganization, but they also needed to have a supporting system to deal with this. And we deployed it for HR case and query management, of which the joiners, movers, and leavers is part of that. Um, but we were looking to deploy a, a, an HR platform to a novice HR, a novice IT environment to allow them to get some benefits from these uh, self-service, from common queries, and also to improve their service to their users. So these slides are the HR director's presentation to the forum of his perception of ServiceNow as an IT platform supporting HR. And you can see that the benefits he saw was the level of communication he was able to give on to his staff. This is the HR homepage, very similar to the dashboard I showed you earlier, but edited for them. And they were impressed by the fact that they could just have news on their page that allowed them to tell people when they logged into their HR homepage what was going on in HR. There is a new maternity policy. There is a new holiday policy, things like that. And this matrix view of what's going on, what people are talking to us and what sort of things they're talking to us about and what the progress is on those things. Just that visibility the navigation in ServiceNow itself as well. They've then got lists of, for example, they can see outstanding queries and cases on one list, what is not assigned. The reason that's all test data is that obviously we, we weren't allowed to screenshot live data from their HR system because um, we didn't have a significant quality of, quantity of um, fake live cases in there and we had to be clear that we had generated test cases uh, because of all of the issues with presenting live HR data. And also the summary counts was also important to them, that they can see what's going on, what's assigned to you personally, what's with your group, what's open, uh, you can see what's appealed, queries closed by HR Direct, things like that. A, a good overview of the information that's going on in HR. And then all of the graphs. Graphs, um, you can see from the top right graph, we got SLAs in place. They could see what state things were at, um, what state they were at uh, in those queries, but also what things were breaching the SLA, whether things were making SLA or not, how well they were doing at progressing their um, HR cases and queries. And finally, the level of detail they could get for this information. They could get um, audit trails of the information. All the actions relating to something were in one place. They've got a single record in an IT system that all of the appropriate people can view. They can see everything that's going on. They don't have to pay through a file to figure it out. Um, they've got icons that allow them to navigate around the system that, that allow them to click quickly to the information that they require. Um, and finally, that they've got a full audit trail of all the updates. We also presented this, now this was a fairly simple, or a very simple portal, now I look at it again, um, but it allowed them to present the HR manifestation of ServiceNow to all of their end users embedded into their primary HR portal, and this gave the end users access to the HR knowledge base, which would be all of the policies, and also to the piece where they can log a case and other information about HR. And finally, we have an example of one of the knowledge records 
um, and how the, the, the end users could get at the HR knowledge as knowledge articles and understand the policies and processes and get all that information very easily. <coughs> and at the point they made this presentation, which was about six months after to go live, they reckon that one in six of their total staff in NHSBC had actually used the knowledge to look up HR policies, procedures, and things like that. And their overall result, um, they actually got a much time faster time to uh, satisfaction than they expected. And at the point they surveyed that the um, after the organizational change, which is designed to significantly improve HR, they had a huge response of 95% of respondents uh, were very satisfied with how HR were handling their queries. Um, and they 94% agreeing that it was very accessible and it was very convenient, and 88% would recommend it to a colleague. And what made them successful? Well, a couple of the highlights for that, they feel that ServiceNow itself made this HR um, platform successful just by being such a usable platform, and the fact that IT engaged with HR and showed them how to manage a case, how to manage a query, what a good process looked like, things like that. At this point, I'm going to hand you back to Tina, and she will close out the WebEx session. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you so much, John Pope, for that. Um, we'll quickly do one question that we um, actually had. I know uh, that we are coming to the end now. Um, but one of the questions that we had, John, was um, how much of the HR work you do is custom built in ServiceNow? versus integration to HR management solutions, such as Workday, um, or ERP, like uh, SAP, PeopleSoft. So it's actually a complex answer of the two. So in the first case, um, ServiceNow out of the box is pretty close to what the HR department wanted for case handling. Um, but we found there were some subtleties, some nuances of uh, HR case handling that the customer needed. But ServiceNow is designed to be used like that. So a significant quantity, 80 to 90% was ServiceNow out of the box. 10 to 20% of it was uh, custom build for um, NHSBT, but that's entirely appropriate with HR that the, the piece is, uh, ServiceNow itself is designed for you to do that custom build and still stay on things like the upgrade path. Integrations to other things, in that case we didn't do any, I've, I've seen a couple of others like integrations to ERP, and it's not unusual to integrate to payroll as well to allow that flow of information because we don't have a solid uh, payroll finance engine in there. Um, so we have got case studies for all of the ones that you mentioned, I can't remember the list again, and it would be quite usual to do that integration. But again, it's quite usual to use this service now as a single um, system of record and make records more accessible, but quite often we do have to get the data from another source, such as um, ERP. Great, thank you, John. Uh, if we just quickly go over the benefits of service automation as well, quickly, um, just for our audience to get an overall um, bit of the... So uh, the one last slide that I've just um, asked Tina to hop back to, even though we're pretty close to the time and I'd like to cover um, service automation to join as movers and levers, well, there's a couple of things. It's the service automation generally increases the speed, um, gives you the better collaboration between the departments um, and less errors and rework. The flexibility to change, well, once you've got the service embedded into a system, understanding the process uh, allows you to be flexible about what it should look like. And of course, you're lowering the costs with better staff utilization. In fact, those two go together you are actually much quicker at doing what you should be doing and you're not handling pieces of paper to no benefit because everything's all over the place and you have to figure out what you're doing. The really important thing to me is it's a better service experience to the customer. Whoever's on the other end of it gets that common standard experience. It, it almost becomes boring. There's no excitement in, at all in joiners, movers and levers because you just press a button and it just happens. And for ourselves in HR and beyond that in IT and the rest of the business, we improve our governance. We give ourselves a much better chance of making sure that we're doing these things properly. Um, and it's quite important, the governance, you know, getting somebody exiting our business on the leaders process is probably the most significant one 
where we need to govern it to make sure we close their payroll account, we take back the company credit card, we take back the laptop, and we move, make sure that they have no complaints or disputes about the way they were, um, they, they were transmitted out of the business. Thank you, John. Uh, just quickly, I will go through some of the things that have been going on at fruition that might be useful to you. We've actually got a CIO survey report, um, survey that we had done with um, 100 enterprise uh, businesses. So you can actually download that from our website um, under white papers uh, to see exactly what the findings were. Um, we've also got the next webinar on the 27th of August. Uh, which is based on the CIO survey I just mentioned now, uh, managing the cloud sprawl. So we, we actually looked at the issues and the risks facing organizations um, uh, as cloud use continues to spread and to suggest what can be done to maximize returns and minimize the downside. So please do sign up for that webinar, which is on our website too. Um, you may already know also, uh, now form is coming up. Uh, we will send this in a PDF uh, version to you guys, so you can click on that and sign up, or you can alternatively go onto our website again um, on events and uh, sign up that way as well, so it's not one to be missed. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for attending today. Um, apologies for the technical difficulties we had this morning, um, sorry, when we started, uh, but we appreciate your time. Um, and those are the details. If you have any more questions, uh, there were a few more questions that were asked, so we will get back to you uh, via email on that one. Thanks, guys. That's the end of the webinar now. Um, I hope you all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.